So in this lecture, let's go ahead and let's style up this particular form which we have. So even before styling up the form, there's one minor problem which we have. So in order to style the form, the form is actually present up over here in the to-do component which we have. And the to-do component, as you can see, uh, it kind of has a form as well as it has this particular to-do list as well. So ultimately, we have two things in here. And in order to create a CSS module, obviously you could create a CSS module for this one as well, but it would be a better thing to kind of separate these two things out into their very own components, even before we could style them. So in order to do that, what we could do is we could create a form component and take this entire form and put this form JSX code inside that form component. And then again, after that, what you could do is you could also create a to do list component for this code as well, as this is nothing but it's a to do list. So let's learn how exactly that could be done. So first of all, I'll go ahead and inside the components, let's create a new component called as form.jsx. And over here, I would say export default function that's going to be form and let's make this thing return something and over here i won't write anything in the return statement i would instead simply cut this particular form from here and then paste it up over here so this is now going to return this and now if i want to substitute this code over here i could now make use of the form component so make sure that form component is auto imported and close this tag up over here now, technically this should work, but what happens is if I go back here, the app shows blank. And if I go to the console, now we have an error over here, which says handle submit is not defined. And this actually happens because the handle submit, which is a function used by form is currently present up over here. That means we need to get handle submit from here into the form. So I could even do that. So let's cut this. Let's go inside the form and let's paste this code over here and this should work. So I could save this one more time and I could go back here, hit refresh one more time. Still, we are getting an error and now we are getting an error which says that, okay, this to do is not defined now. So to do is not defined inside form.jsx because right now here, this form is using to do and it's also using set to do as well. That means now this state which we are using here, which is the to do state, we have to get the state, cut this from here and add it up over here. So we have done that as well. But again, if I go back here, now that error is gone, but now it says use state is not defined. So that's because we are using the use state hook. We have to import that. So import use state. All right. So after this, now this seems to work. And now we have the to-do list as well, but now let's see what happens if I try to add some item. So let's add dinner. And if I click on add, now again, we have another error. And the reason why we have this error is because it says set to-dos is not defined. So when we submit this form, this handle submit gets executed and now it will actually invoke the set to-dos method which we have. And the set to do's method is actually present here. That means we also have to get this from here and then paste it up over here. Now you might think the error would now be gone. However, if you hit refresh, now the app again disappears and now it says to do's is not defined in this to do dot JSX. So now as we have moved that particular to do from here to here, the to do is not able to access this to do's from here. So now this is actually a problem. And that's because this mapping code actually requires the to do's array, which we have now shifted to form. So now the question is how exactly to solve this problem. So even before solving this to do's problem, let's actually take this code itself and put it into its own component, which is the to do list component. So let's create a new component here and let's call this thing as to do list.jsx and this will say export default function to do list and this thing is going to return uh, let's return a div for now and that's it and then let's take this code which is this mapping code cut it from here paste it up over here and now as we want to substitute this code with the code present here i'll make use of the 
to-do component here or to-do list component here. So to-do list. So now we have the to-do list over here as well. So we have the form and the to-do list and its very own components inside this to-do component itself. So now the code looks much cleaner. However, now the problem still persists. That is this to-do list, which we have defined as a component, this does not have access to the to-dos which we have. And that's because we have actually moved the to-dos to the form component. So let me close the other tabs and let me open up the form here. So the form actually now has access to the to-do as well as to-dos. So now let's try to understand this for a second. So the form now needs access to the to-do as well as to-dos. The to-do which we have up over here, which is the to-do list, it actually needs access to the to-dos. So now the question is, how exactly can we share these to-dos between these two components? So whenever you have a state which you want to share between the two components, what you do is instead of putting that particular state inside one of the components, you put the state in the parent component. So the component which is parent to the form component and the to-do list component is this to-do component itself. So out of these two states which we have, the to-do states is the one which is required by both the components which is form as well as to-do list. Therefore, I'll take this particular state out of this one. So I'll cut this from here and paste it up over here. So now this state is now present in the parent of these two components. And now once we have this state over here, now we could pass in this state to both the components as props. So to the form, I could say, okay, the to-dos is going to be to do's so I'll pass to do's I will also pass in the set to do's as well so set to do's is going to be set to do's so once I have taken the state and I have passed it to the form I'll make this form now accept these two things so I'll make this thing accept the to do's and I'll make this thing accept set to do's and obviously this already has this to do state so we don't have to pass it over there and now as far as this to do list is concerned this to do list which we have it only needs access to the to do's here. So therefore I'll take these to do's and pass them as props here. So to do's is going to be to do's. And after passing this, now let's make this to do list accept to do's as props. So over here, I'll say accept the to do's. All right. Now to do list has access to to do's. And now this form actually has access to to do's set to do's, and it already has access to the to do and set to do over here. So now if I save all the code, go back here, Hit refresh now the application should work absolutely fine so I could say lunch here add it and after adding this this still is showing us an error so it says to do item is not defined and that is because inside the to-do list we are using this to-do item component but we are not importing that and that's because it was already imported here so I could just cut it from here and import that particular component here so if I do that, if I go back, hit refresh, if I add dinner here, click on add, this time dinner would be added. I could add lunch as well. And now the application is working absolutely fine. So if you do not understand how all of this is working, let's take a look at this simple diagram. So this right here is a component structure. That is how the components are kind of laid out. So right now we have this app component, which is this component right here. And inside the app component, we have the header component and the to do component. Now, if you take a look at the to do component inside the to do component, we have the form component. So inside to do, we have the form and the to do list component. So form and to do list. Now, the thing is, if you take a look at the form component, it needs access to the to do, which is the single item. And it also needs access to the to do's as well, which is all the items. However, this to do list only need access to all the to do's and it does not care about the single to do item, which we have. So what we do here is that as these two components actually need access to the to do's, we grab the to do state, which we have, and we move it to the nearest parent, which we have here. So what we do is we take this particular to do state, which we have, and we move it to the to do, which we have. And that's exactly what we have done here. So if you go to to do here, we have simply taken the to do's and we have added it up over here to to do. And the reason for adding it here is because to do is a parent of form and to do list. Now what this parent could do is that it could take that particular 
to do's and it could pass those to do's as props to the form as well as this to do list which we have. And that's exactly what we have done here. We have taken the to do's, passed it to the form and we have passed it to the to do list as well. Now this to do's also needs the set to do's as well. So we have passed it there, but the to do list has nothing to do with the set to do's. So we have not passed it over here as of now. So this is how this entire application works. And this particular concept of taking the common state between two components and kind of moving it up inside the parent is called as lifting state up. So here we have lifted the state up so that that state could then be passed as props to the other components which we have. And therefore, now our application works absolutely fine. Now, once we have separated out our application into multiple components, in the next lecture, let's now go ahead and let's style up the form and the to-do list individually using CSS modules. So let's learn how to style them in the next one.